Okay, in this short presentation, I'm going to show that survivor bias can be erroneously used to argue both for and against vaccine safety. And I'm going to do this using a very simple example based on deadly cinema attendance. So the question is, is attending the cinema deadly? Now, or to express the question statistically, does more frequent attendance increase or decrease mortality? Now, that sounds like a crazy question, right? Because intuitively, we know that cinema visits have no impact on your health. But imagine that a study's been done that collected data on people who died after visiting the cinema and concluded that attending the cinema contributes to an increase in mortality. Should you believe the conclusion? Well, I'm going to show you that there are two different types of survivor bias, which by suitable manipulation of the statistics can be used to show both increases or decreases in mortality rates the more cinema visits that are made. The first type of survivor bias enables you to prove that you get decreased mortality with increased cinema visits. So basically, visiting the cinema is kind of like good for your health. And what we're going to do here is assume a constant 2% mortality rate during each time period. So in this case, we're going to simply count the number of deaths out of those who had zero visits, one visit, two visits, etc. This will inevitably result in those with the most visits having the lowest mortality rate because those who die during the study have less time to accumulate cinema visits than those who survive to the end of the study. So to understand this, imagine an experimental scenario in which we select 10,000 people who've never been to the cinema before and we monitor them over two equal time periods. So we've got a group A of 5,000 people who at the end of the first period we're going to take to the cinema and we've got another group B who at the end of the first period we're not going to take to the cinema. So 10,000 people in all, 5,000 in each group. Now during period one, because of the 2% mortality rate during each time period, so this might be six months, a year, whatever, 2% of 5,000 is 100. So you'd expect 100 people from group A to die during that first period and 100 people in group B to die. So at the end of period one, in group A, there's 4,900 who survive. And in group B, there's 4,900 who survive. Now, at the end of period one, the start of period we two, we're going to take those 4,900 survivors from group A to the cinema. And during period two, 2% 2 of those 4,900, which is 98 more dying. And for the group B people, well, 2% of the 4,900 survivors there will die, and that's 98 more who die. So we've got a 2% mortality rate in those who went to the cinema because 98 is 2% of 4,900. But what about those who never went to the cinema? Well, there were 5,000 people there who certainly never went to the cinema, but there were also 100 from Group A who died and therefore certainly never got the chance to go to the cinema. So we've got 5,100 people who never went to the cinema during the course of this study. And how many of them died? Well, we've got the 100 there from group A, we've got the 100 from group B in the first period, and we've got the 98 from group B in the second period. So we've got a total of 298 out of the 5,100 who died. And that's a 5.8% mortality rate in those who didn't go to the cinema. So clearly, based on this analysis, your mortality rate is lower if you go to the cinema than if you don't. Now clearly there's an error there, so how can we fix this type of survivor bias? Well, what we want to concentrate on is how many people periods were spent in the no cinema state and how many were spent in the cinema visit state. In the no cinema state, we had 5,000 people from group A during the whole of period one. So we've got 5,000 people periods there. We've got 5,000 people periods from group B in period one. And we've also got the 4,900 people periods from group B. So in total, there's 14,900 people periods spent in the no cinema state. And how many deaths were there among these? Well, we've got the 100 there, the 100 there, and the 98 there. So that's 298 deaths 
and 298 out of 14,900 is a mortality rate of 2%, which is 20 deaths per 1,000 person periods, as we would expect. And what about the number of people periods for those spent in the cinema visit state? Well, there was only 4,900. And how many deaths were there amongst these? Well, those 98. And 98 divided by 4,900 is a rate of 2%, i.e. 20 deaths per 1,000 person period. So they're the same for the no cinema people and for the one cinema visit people, the mortality rate now is the same. And so we fix that particular type of survivor bias. So it's fixed by using person periods, which is typically person years spent in each status category. But even this doesn't avoid the second type of survivor bias. The second type of survivor bias enables us to prove that you get increased mortality with increased cinema visits. So in this case, cinema visits are bad for you as opposed to being good for you. And what we're assuming here, the difference is, the realistic assumption that there will be, especially in an aging population, a declining survival probability over time. So in the second period, the probability of surviving for those who already survived the first period is actually lower than the probability of surviving at the start. So if the probability of surviving is lower, the mortality rate is higher. So we're going to assume a 3% mortality rate in that second period. So again, in this case, we start with our 5,000 people in group A, 5,000 in group B. And in period one, again, 100 die, because we've got 2% mortality rate there from group A, and the same in group B, 100 die there. So we've got, again, our 4,900 survivors in each group. But in period two, there's a 3% mortality rate. So 3% of 4,900 is 147. Whether they went to the cinema or not, you're gonna get that same mortality rate in period two. So what's the overall comparative mortality rate in person periods then for the no cinema and the one cinema? For the one cinema visit, there's 4,900 person periods. So 4,900 people periods were spent in the cinema visit state of whom 147 die. That's a mortality rate of 3% because they were all in that second period. Periods spent That's in the no cinema deaths state. Per 1,000 person periods. But what about those in the no visit state? So there were 14,900 people and there were 347 deaths. That's a mortality rate of 2.3%, i.e. 23 deaths per person periods. So with an aging cohort, this type of survivor bias is actually inevitable. Now, what does this mean for studies into vaccine safety? Well, the examples only compared no visit mortality rates with one visit mortality rates, but the illusions extend to any number of visits. If we simply replace cinema visits with vaccine doses, then we can create for a placebo vaccine the same statistical illusions of either increased safety, the more doses you take, or decreased safety, the more doses you take. So for the first type of survivor bias, we can also replace deaths with cases to erroneously conclude increasing efficacy of the vaccine after each dose. And we don't even need to have zero doses as the control group to see these effects. If we have a one dose and two dose, this would show the same results as zero visits and one visit to the cinema. Now, the first type of survivor bias has featured in studies claiming vaccine safety and efficacy, especially those relating to vaccines in pregnancy, despite the obvious way to avoid it. And our substack has many examples of this. But it's also possible that the second type of survival bias has featured in studies that have demonstrated increasing mortality with each additional dose of the vaccine. And in such cases, we need to be clear that the increasing mortality rate isn't simply confounding the known effect of normal declining survival probability in an elderly population with a non-uniform mortality rate over the study period.